We are good to go. We are good to okay. go. Good evening, everyone. It is now 6.30 on Thursday, April 13th. Welcome to the Situate Planning Board. Um, we are doing public participation via remote access only, either by computer or by phone. You can go to our website and all of the information that you need is there. I will accept a motion for the agenda as posted. So moved. Is second. there a second? Second. All in, all in favor? Ms. Barbine. Aye. Ms. Lampert. Aye. Mr. Pritchard. Aye. Ms. Lewis. Aye. Mr. Bornstein. Aye. Mr. McLean. Aye. Thank you, unanimous. All in favor. Thank you. Our first item is the public hearing, Scenic Road at 143 Water Street, LC Watt 17. Um, the applicant is Carl Christensen, trustee, the Carl Christensen 207 Revocable Living Trust, and the owner is the Lion Head Trust. In accordance with Mass General Laws Chapter 40, Section 15C, the Scenic Road Act, the Planning Board, it will hold a public hearing on Thursday, May 13th, 2021, at 6.30 p.m. in the Select Board Hearing Room, 600 Chief Justice Cushing Highway, District Mass. The subject of the hearing is the removal of 36.3 inches of stone wall in the public right of way of Border Street for a proposed driveway for a newly created lot for a single family home at 143 Border Street for applicant Carl Christensen, trustee, the Christensen 2007 Revocable Trust and owner of the Lion's Head Trust. Work is located on the assessor's map, 6 dash two dash nine parcel of plans are available for review in the planning board office town hall 600 chief justice cushing highway Fritchett, by appointment only participation in public hearing for butters and other interested parties will be via remote access only okay so who is here so to and just before you start i noticed okay. there was a typo in the legal ad yes uh it's supposed to be 36.3 feet not inches Oh. Okay. <laughs> <coughs> Can't pick up on everything, sorry. 36. Yeah, there's. 36 feet, three inches. Okay. All right, who's doing the presentation for this, please? Uh, my name is Deborah Keller with Merrill Engineers and Land Surveyors, uh, representing the applicant, Carl Christensen. Um, as mentioned, um, Carl is purchasing a portion of the 143 Border Street property, approximately 17 acres, that uh, the majority of it does front Border Street. He's looking to uh, construct a single family home um, and we need a uh, new driveway. Uh, for that home and so we looked at the majority of his frontage um, does have existing stone wall in front of it. We did locate, uh, looked along the stone wall and tried to locate the driveway where we would not impact any trees that are along, either on the border street layout or on our site to, to try to keep that street view uh, consistent. And therefore we've located the driveway where we ha have, um, it's an approximately 13 foot wide driveway at the entrance, come, driving in. Um, we're looking for some shoulder width on either side just for some flexibility with the driveway. Um, we are putting in an entrance uh, set back into the field, um, gated entrance, and uh, looking to mimic the same stone wall with that entrance to try to keep that, uh, maintain that street view along uh, Border Street. Uh, the second sheet of the application or plan of the application shows uh, a little bit of detail on the gated entrance that's set back. It's approximately 34 feet from the stone wall set back into the site. Um, I did um, stake, I don't know if anybody drove down Border Street, but I did try to stake out, not too obvious, but um, there's some stakes with some pink flagging along the stone wall as to uh, to give an idea of where the 
entrance would be. Um, so I, I, that's pretty much what we're looking for. Uh, I'm happy I have to answer a, any questions. I have a question about the gate itself. Is this basically for security purposes? Um, to be honest, I think it was a preference. I would have to double check on whether it's a security uh, um, for security purposes or not, but they're looking to maintain that fenced area or gate it in. Um, okay. it, it is open on either, the property is open on either side, so it would just help prevent people from accidentally driving down the driveway that, you know. My concern is the fire department. Okay. So if this is something that's going to be locked or they need a garage door opener, I think it's something that you need to think about. Okay, we can check, we can uh, coordinate with the fire department and we'll set it up um, with, with their um, coordination. That was my question. All right, Karen, do you have anything that you would like to um, say about this? Um, I think that the opening in the stone wall seems reasonable um, because Border Street is a narrow scenic road and they've tried to provide a little bit extra room in case, you know, you know, so that it would be easier to pull off because Border Street is narrow and scenic um, for visibility because the, the stone wall out there is a good hefty stone wall and uh, they are going to be replicating the stone, uh, the stone wall internally with the gate. Um, I would recommend approval of this. It's going Comments to the Conservation the Commission for the, um, for the site and stormwater as it's in, it's in conservation's jurisdiction. The only jurisdiction the planning board has is the scenic road. Thank you. Uh, comments from the board? Uh, just, a, just a question, is the, uh, the stone wall, I take it, is in the town right away? Yes. It is, okay. At least the front face is. Um, I'm sorry, Karen, I didn't hear you. At least the front face is. Oh, the front face is, okay. Uh, again, my name is Deb Keller. Um, the stone wall is technically the, the property line, so it, um, as Karen said, yeah, so you'd have the front face technically. The, the wall straddles the property line, yeah. Okay. Patty? No, I'm all set, thank you. Ben? Um, I think as long as an effort is made to replicate the uh, aesthetic value of the of the existing wall and landscape. I think that this is okay. It does it does from from the graphic depiction and the engineering plan. It, it, the site plan. It, it. I mean, to me, it seems a little bit wide um, in terms of the removal of the wall. Uh, I I, un I understand the the wider uh, apron where the where the driveway enters the street, but I guess I'm not clear on why. Uh, the amount of linear footage to be removed was was determined. I don't know if that's for truck turning radius or for what purpose, but it seems like from the edge of driveway to the where the wall is going to be removed, there's kind of a, a few feet on either side that I guess I just um, I'm not clear on why it's why that opening is to be so wide. But other than that, I, I mean, as long as the aesthetic value is 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 of that area is retained, that then I'm okay. Deb, do you want to respond? Uh, sure. Uh, as mentioned, the goal is really to make sure that um, with Border Street being so narrow, the wall is approximately three feet, 2.9 feet um, in height. So as you pull out of the driveway, we wanted to make sure that it was pulled back far enough so that if, if you're trying to get out of the driveway or in, um, we have enough room there and it's set back enough so that it doesn't um, impede any kind of sight distance. On, uh, as you're pulling out of the driveway. I think the question was more about the width of it. Yes, it, so we pulled, we opened up the widening, widen, um, the opening in the wall so that you could provide that sight distance um, 
and the height of the wall as you come out is close to what your eye height would be. It's, it's within six inches or so. So we wanted to make sure that if the wall was really close to the driveway, um, it wouldn't obscure um, any site, uh, site distances as well as being able to have the flexibility of having larger vehicles uh, pull in and out of the driveway. Um, Rebecca? I don't have any questions. Bob? Uh, I'm happy with it. I understand the, the reason for the whiff. Um, I have the same issue uh, at my house. It's just going onto a, a busy road or a narrow road. You need to have, you can't really nose out into the road. Um, so you need to have a, a wider uh, driveway so that you do have sight lines uh, for oncoming traffic either way. So I'm good with it. Thank you. All right, this is a public hearing. Do we have anybody in the public that would like to comment? If there's anyone in the public that would like to comment, you can raise your hand on your screen by going down to participants, um, clicking on the participants down there and raising your hand, or you can raise your hand and wave at us. Or if you're by phone, you can hit star um, nine to raise your hand if you're joining us by phone. So we will enter a public comment at this time. Oh, we do have one question. Okay, someone has a question. It, no, Would this is Carl it? Christensen. I just want to comment on the case. I'm sorry, sir, you're and breaking up. Could you try again, please? Oh, this, sorry, this is Carl Christensen, and I just wanted to make a comment about the gate and that the gate is really there just for aesthetics to make it look like a traditional farm gate and it won't be closed or locked. It'll just be there for aesthetics. So okay. just to resolve that issue. Thank you. Good to know. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? I think we're okay. All right. Thank you very much. We move to close the Scenic Road Act public hearing and to approve the application for removal of approximately 36 feet, three inches linear feet of stone wall in connection with the construction of a proposed driveway for a new single family home for applicant Carl Christensen, trustee, a Carl Christensen 2007 revocable living trust. The stones removed will be reused if possible of the proposed stone wall at the proposed gated stone wall entry, approximately 35 feet westward into the property as shown on the site plan by Merrill engineers and land sur surveyors dated March 10, 2021 with revisions through 4 21 and a front entry details plan for 143 to 145 Border Street by Sean Papage, landscape architect as the new gate wall is to match the existing wall. Is there a second? Second. Second. All those in favor? Ms. Barbine. Aye. Ms. Lampert. Aye. Mr. Pritchard. Aye. Ms. Lewis. Aye. Mr. Bornstein. Aye. Thank you. Unanimous. All in favor. Thank you. All right. We now have a continued public hearing, special permit accessory dwelling. 129 Stockbridge Road, Assessor's Map Block, Lot 54-1-41, Applicant Owner Kyle and Eunice Sakari. And who is making this presentation? Good evening, Board. Tracy Sharkey on behalf of the applicant, 14 West Street, Douglas, Massachusetts, GBI. So we had revised the plans from the last meeting, uh, meeting the required 40% of the existing square footage of the principal structure. We've actually relocated it to the other side of the, the Linda, Linda Lane. And then we've also added um, some infiltration to address the water resource district requirements. And that's been shown on the plan. Um, 
the plans that were submitted for the building, it will be a 27.6 by 30 um, accessory structure. Um, in terms of your proposed gravel parking, which is in conjunction with the existing gravel parking, if somebody's parking in the main house, and who's ever in the accessory isn't going to be able to get out. Have you given any thought to the possibility of putting in basically a circular driveway so that you have an entrance and an exit on Linda Lane? Uh, I believe the owner would be amenable to that. I think they, they just thought to keep it as one driveway. Well, then you're going to get into a traffic problem. Okay. Um, I believe they are on the call, but if they are not, I'm sure that we can condition that. Okay. Uh, Karen? Um, so I see the major question that the board has to decide was, is this um, accessory dwelling subordinate or not subordinate? That's, to me, the major question. Um, I... I agree that a circular driveway would be um, probably better because there's, if somebody's proposed parking in the proposed gravel parking area for the accessory dwelling, they're not going to be able to get out if two cars are parked sideways. The only way to park in the existing driveway would be tandem, and I think that would be very difficult. Um, the infiltration has been added, but I don't know, there's no test pit. So I don't know if it's three feet above um, groundwater. Um, if the board wanted, they could condition it. Um, the stockpile area should either be surrounded by um, hay bale stock, um, silt sock, or it should be within the limit of work. I question myself that if the accessory dwelling was pushed back a little bit further so that it was even with the existing house or slightly behind it, I don't think you'd be able to see it on Stockbridge Road and would that make it more subordinate? That, that's just a question I raised to the board. Um, I'll open it up to the board for discussion. Uh, discussion. Steve. Um. I guess it's kind of hard. Do we do we have elevation? Uh, is there some kind of elevation view of this thing? I think all I've got is a plan. I, I just, I'm sorry, I didn't even see this till today. But the all elevation I, came early on. Okay. Of this size, this new size? Um, I think the elevation was essentially always the, the same. I mean, I sent it around last time. 19.9 feet. 19.9 feet what? That's no, to, the ridge, to the ridge height. No, no, no. I, yeah, I, I, I was trying to get a sense of how it compares to the existing house. Well, that I don't know. Well, it's kind of hard to tell right. how subordinate it is then. I mean, it looks like it's roughly the same size, is it? Um, Steve, I'm going to see if I can send it over to you, unless you found it. Did you find it? No, I haven't found it yet. Okay, I'm, I'm going to see if I can send it over. And okay. I believe um, we do have a comment from the potential owner, if you want to take that while I'm looking for the elevation, or do you want to continue with your board comments? We'll take the comment from the applicant. Okay. Hello, my name is Wayne Zerwicki. I'm Kyle's father. And you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, sir. Okay, well, there are three cars now parked in the driveway, and I'm parked next to them. So far cars park, and I might have a travel trailer perpendicular to them temporarily. Um, so there's plenty of room without having a 
circular driveway or accident getting out of here. There's no window lane, there's, there's no traffic jam here. I could park on the other side of the house if I needed to, the proposed house. Okay. Well, that's not set up as a parking spot, right? That's correct. Well, versus a circular driveway. All right. Um, all right. Further comments, Steve? Have you found what you're looking for? I can hear that. Could you say that again, please? I'm on a phone and I'm on I understand. I've, I've asked a board member if he has found the elevations of the main house. Is that what somebody just put up on the screen? I just put I just put them up on the screen. They're ah, they're okay. the newest version that we have. They might be slightly different, but it's basically the same thing. Okay. So is is this roughly the same height as the existing house? Yeah. Yeah. Excuse me. I didn't hear that. I didn't either. Ms. Starkey? Yes. Um, is the main house and the accessory the same height? Yes. 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 That's a yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you. I, I, I tend to agree with Karen on this is that it, it, it looks like to me, it's going to look like two separate houses as opposed to sort of a primary and accessory dwelling. I agree, Steve. I do too. Mm -hmm. Patty? I agree as well. Ben? Um, I, 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 I mean, again, it, it, I'm just looking at what we've been supplied with, but so it's obviously very much up to our own judgment here, but uh, I, I'm, I'm actually okay with it based off the floor plans and um, and kind of the elevations that we do have. To me, it, it does look um, somewhat less than, you know, at a subordinate scale, particularly um, I've dr driven by the residents a couple of times. And if what I surmise um, from these plans is what's going to be built, then I, I think I'm all right with that. Uh, I think, um, more a question is regarding the layout of the parking lot and then um i mean i think if if we're going to be doing stormwater uh for the you know, water resource protection district i think that it should be done up to the standards we would normally hold for stormwater so i think i mean to some extent test pits probably should be done or a soil, soil evaluator should probably look at what's going on there um and uh so I guess I, I'm okay with the, the building itself. Uh, I defer to the to board as to how we should handle the layout of the of the parking area. All right, um, Rebecca. Do we have the size difference? I, do we already go over this? What are the sizes of the houses and the accessory dwelling of the house? And the, does it meet our requirements, even though it doesn't look like it does? Yes, it meets the requirements. The accessory dwelling is 825 square feet. It's 39.17% of the total square footage of the primary dwelling, which is 2,210 2, square feet. Or okay. the, assessor's, the assessor's card has it as 2,106. And so it's less than, it's less than 40%. Okay. All right. Uh, Rebecca, are you, are you all set? I'm good, yep. Okay. Um, Bob, do you have any comment, please? Uh, no comments. Steve, anything further? Uh, just a question on the water resources. Um, is this whole lot in the district? Yes. It is? Okay. Yes. I also tend to agree with Ben, then, that we should, we should make sure that the infiltrators going to work. I'm not sure I'm inclined to, to just condition this. All 
All right, I think seriously, there is some work that needs to be done here. I, I really think that under the circumstances, because we want this to be truly subordinate, if the um, dwelling could be pushed maybe 10 or 15 feet back on the lot, because they certainly have enough room, and I really think that a circular driveway makes a tremendous amount of sense. Plus, you want the um, infiltrators and whatever stormwater needs to be done. And I think that it behooves the applicant to give us um, some comparison between what's going to be built and what exists as far as height, et cetera, is concerned. I mean, how does the board feel about that? Yeah, I think that's a pretty good summary. And also, um, it, it's not clear to me, but maybe that's just the way this is drawn. But this, as Karen mentioned too, the stockpile area, are those supposed to be hay bales around it? And what is the stockpile area? I assume it's for the excavation for the building foundation, right? That's what I would assume too. I don't want to assume anything here, seriously. So, uh, Tracy? Yes. Oh, did you get unmuted? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I was looking through my emails. So I believe that we did a side-by-side -side on the very initial um, submittal. The existing home is at least a half a story uh, taller. This is a single story uh, structure. So the home is about 25, 26 feet. I do have on A3, the existing home. It's a cape style with a full shed dormer on the back. So it's pretty large in volume as compared to the single story accessory structure that we're proposing. Um, the stockpile area is noted with the proposed straw wattles. So we're doing stake straw wattles around any material that may erode along the site. So we're containing that and it's shown in the orange detail. And um, we did pull the, the material of the soils. So that was not showing any groundwater. We used uh, any soils mapping. I am a soil evaluator, so I can verify that with a test pit with engineering if that's needed. But we do have the straw wattle detail. We also um, used an infiltration system that we typically use with that type of soil, as well as that type of um, impervious addition. So th this home is a smaller, it's a single story. It does meet the requirements for the square footage. Uh, the driveway is what the owner had proposed. Um, we could make it a little bit larger um, so that people could turn around if they don't want another curb cut on that side. And I know it's not shown on this plan, but there is an additional driveway on the other side. So of the main home, I believe. So um, I think we've addressed everything. It is much smaller than what the existing home is. And it's farther back, set way back into the backyard. So I think that was the only other clarifications. We did submit something, a side-by-side -side comparison. Um, it's just not in this last revised set. Karen? Well, I, I think the board has to decide if having it if the location makes it subordinate. I mean, it does meet the size requirements, but it, the board has to decide if it, if, it, if it appears subordinate or not. It still appears that there are two, that we're putting two houses um, on this one lot. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that if it were pushed back, so that it was somewhat behind the existing house, then that might resolve some of these, these issues. And I just feel that there's information missing that I would prefer to have, which I have already reiterated in terms of 
Um, I have a plan here that shows it's not stamped. I have one that's stamped April 14th, but I think there's a, a newer one. And that, that's basically what I have. So I don't know how the board feels about this. Frankly, I'd like to continue this until we can get our ducks in a row. Yeah. I'll accept comments from the board, please. Well, I, I would agree. I guess if they've addressed the stockpile and stuff like that, that's fine. I, I still think that it would be better because if you look at it, the frontage is really not on Stockbridge, right? It's on uh, Linda Lane. That's right. the way it's set up. And, you know, it's actually proud of the existing home on Linda Lane. And it begins to look like two separate houses there. Um, I also think, um, I think Ben's right in terms of the stormwater, given that it's in the Water Resources Protection District, is we ought to have groundwater level confirmed for the infiltration. Gavin? Well, I defer to the engineer and I agree with Steve. Thank you. Rebecca? I'm going to go with uh, what the board is saying. All right. Well, I'm saying I think we should continue this. Do you agree with that? Yes. And? I mean, I, I, I kind of think that things could be hashed out through condition, but it sounds like, you know, I'm in the minority here, so. Not necessarily, but you never know. Uh, Rebecca? Well, you seem to still have the driveway issue. Um, yes. I mean, I'm not worried, I guess, I don't know about the, as long as one house is smaller, um, I guess I'm not having much of a problem with that, though I don't know that I can, I think you guys are seeing it in a different way than I'm seeing it. They're going right next to each other. Is that our no. issue with the house? No. Well, no, the accessory dwelling is supposed to be clearly subordinate to the main house. And uh, but not but not in size alone. That doesn't make the difference. No, no, because that's always the case, right? With the accessory dwellings. So it's not just the size, it's sort of its relationship to the to the current home. I think that's really kind of the issue here. Because yes. the accessory dwelling always has to be smaller mm -hmm. than the primary. Can't be any more than 40%, right? So can the house be pick, put back, push back? I would think so. It looks like there's room there to do that. Um, but that that's, guess, I guess that's up to the proponent. Um, I, there, there's enough here that, you know, you know, sort of normally if there were a couple of things we, we thought could be addressed just as a condition, we could do that. But it seems like there's enough here that I, I wouldn't want to leave too many things to just conditions. You know, we, we should get it a little more nailed down. I agree. All right, Karen, do we have a laundry list of what we would like the applicant to come up with, please? Well, it seems like you're saying you want them to do a test pit for the groundwater. It yeah. looks like you're asking them to look at moving the house back a little bit, the accessory dwelling back a little bit. So it would appear to be more subordinate on the lot in location and relook at the parking. Yes. That's the only issues that I've mm -hmm. gleaned from what you're elaborating. So the question becomes to the applicant, how soon can they turn that around? Tracy? Hi. Um, I would have to schedule the test pit. Who, who is who's witnessing the test pit? Or is it on your honor? Yeah, you're going to fill out the soil okay. evaluator sheet. So I'm going to say it's, it's on your honor. Yeah. Okay. But you fill out all the, all the, all the information. Yeah. Um, and then I have to speak with the owner to see if, um, if we can demonstrate that um, two cars for the house, two cars for the accessory structure could fit in that driveway portion, then we would demonstrate.
demonstrate that on a plan and I'll ask them if they want to get closer to the swimming pool fence that's back there. Um, we can still meet the setbacks. Right. Uh, right. That, that's where they picked it to go. Um, and there's a wall, there's some elevation differences back there, but we'll see how close they want to get to the existing fence. We do need um, some room to go around the structure um, for our, our excavation. But I don't think that would be an issue. And then maybe we reconfigure the parking. Um, so, I mean, the park the majority for the house is already on the adjacent street. So, um, but yeah, I would say maybe within a week and a half. Okay. Then do you think that you could come back to us um, June 10th and yep. have all of your ducks in a row? Yep, as long as it's just these three items that we need to um, address. Does the board want also a side by side of the existing home versus the accessory structure? Yes. 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 Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Um, just a just a comment, Karen, is um, I won't be here June tenth. So um, if you need me to be around to vote on it, um, I mean, I, I guess I don't have to, but um, I will be out of town on tenth. You can't zoom it in, Steve. Yes, Steve. <laughs> um, I, I might be able to. Let me think about it. So what, what time would that be in California? That's going to be oh. three o'clock, right? Yeah, I mean, I could, we have room. We yeah, have I might room. be able to, I might be able to do that. Uh, I'll, yeah, I could probably make that work. Good, good point, Ann. We could put it on first on June 10th at 630. So that mm -hmm. would be, you know, at a, 3.30 out there um, yeah. because I don't have anything definitively submitted yet for, um, I have something pending for June 10th, but nothing definitively submitted. Actually, Karen, for me, it would be a little better if we could do it a little later, so. So like, like give me a time. 7.30? <laughs> 30 our time. Yes, yeah. So that means, our, Okay, I time. believe we I believe we will have something to fill in the first hour. I, I believe I'm expecting okay. I'm expecting something to come in and it's got multiple components. So okay. I think we could schedule this at 730. Okay, that's fine. If if you find it doesn't um you know I'll I'll make it work. We need you, Steve. It's like a virtual world. <laughs> this is true. Okay. <laughs> Is there any public comment, please? Because this is a public hearing. So again, if there's anyone out there for public comment, you can raise your hand by going down to the bottom of your screen on Zoom and hitting the participants, or you can, die, if you're on by phone, you can hit star nine. So if there's any comments out there, this would be the time. Thank you. <clears throat> no comments? Okay. I move to accept the applicant's request for continuance of the accessory dwelling public hearing for 129 Stockbridge Road until June 10th, 2021 at 7.30, 7.30 p.m. with a date to certain of uh, June 30th. Sure. Okay. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Ms. Burbine. Aye. Ms. Lampert. Aye. Mr. Pritchard. Aye. Mr. Bornstein. Aye. Mr. McLean. Aye. Thank you. Unanimous. All Thank in you. favor? Thank you very much, board, for your time. Thank you. And we'll see you on Thank the 10th. Okay. Thank you. Bye. All right. So moving on to um, 168B Stockbridge Road, 4A. This is a public meeting. It is not a public hearing. So, uh, Karen, would you care to opine on what we have here? Uh, I'd like the applicant to make their presentation. All right, fine. And who, who would that be? Okay. Hello? Hello. 
Hi, can you hear me? Yes, would you identify yourself, please? Yes, thank you. Attorney Edward Valenzuela. I represent Stephen and Marianne Gabriel. Um, Mr. Diaz, who also owns the larger parcel there, I believe is gonna join us as is his, his attorney, Dan Broderick. Okay. Did you want me to give you an overview? Yes, please. Okay, thank you. Um, so if you're familiar with this property, there's a long driveway off of Stockbridge Road. And I gave you, a, uh, there's the a and plan, but what I've also given you is a smaller eight and a half by 11 uh, plan where I highlighted and I wrote parcels and put some little color code. If you have that, that might uh, make it easier for you to follow me. So we're doing, we're accomplishing four things here. And uh, there are two houses at, when you go down Stockbridge Road. Um, one is the 168B, which is the Gabriel, and then the house directly across from it, which is the Diaz home. Now, part of my submission was a memorandum in support of the approval of the a and plan, and I've provided you with deeds and other documentation that show the history here going back to before the 50s, when uh, I believe the Diaz house was built sometime maybe in the 20s, and then later on, when the Gabriel house lot was added and I've, I've included that deed and some of the other documents. And the access at the time is in one of the deeds that I've provided you with that's over the front parcel. So if you see one of my plans as parcel D, that strip of right of way goes from Stockbridge Road to um, the back boundary line, if you will, of the lots that front on Stockbridge Road. So that parcel D strip is also, there is a recorded right of way. There you go, thank you very much. So that parcel D is a recorded right of way and I sort of drew little lines purple to highlight it. Um, so that was how access to the, 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 the homes was gained. But if you go further up now to parcel C, that's not on any record, on any deed, on any plan, we've done a full title search of this property and, and it really, in the 40 years I've been doing this, I've never seen anything like it because banks have given mortgages and refinanced the properties back there, but I don't see that there's any access to those properties. So what we've done, the Gabriels and the Diaz, is we've reached an agreement whereby Mr. Diaz, who owns the larger parcel there, so if you slide up a little further, please. So 168B, that's the Gabriel home. And across the street, right across from that, uh, the Gabriel home is the uh, Diaz property. Thank you, right in there. But Mr. Diaz owns the, the entire parcel there except for 168B. So all of that land after parcel D the, um, it belongs to Diaz. And at some point he deeded 168B property uh, to my clients, it was deeded to them. So we're, we're doing four things here. First is that the Parcel C and Parcel D, Mr. Diaz is giving a right of way or easement for ingress and egress so that the Gabriels can access their property at 168B. Um, we are also, there's two yellow parcels there, one's Parcel A and Parcel B. He is granting to the Gabriels Parcel A, you can see there's some structures there, a shed, um, and also parcel B, which is actually the front yard of the Gabriel property and includes part of the, uh, the gravel driveway. <clears throat> and they've been using that, you know, it's, it's got lawn in that area and you get the driveway. So what we're accomplishing is actually would exist on the ground. Um, if you've been down that uh, Stockbridge Road, that's basically the layout we had a the a, a plus construction survey, uh, actually do an instrument survey and, and write this up. And so we're conveying, Mr. Diaz is conveying those two parcels, A and B to the Gabriel parcel so that it, it's what has, has existed for decades. Um, so Gabriel's will own that. So the A and R plan is basically saying to you that 168B Stockbridge Road has existed all we're doing, we're actually making it bigger. We're adding those two parcels, parcel A and parcel B that are in yellow. And at the same time, we're 
clarifying that there's um, easement rights that 168B has uh, to access the home at 168B over parcel C. Parcel D may be redundant because there is a recorded um, right of way, but the actual layout of the right of way seems to, it, to me, to, to uh, blend more over into uh, the lot that's next door. The actual right of way, if you've been out there, is as we've shown it on the plan. Um, so to the extent that Mr. Diaz has rights over that, he's, his easement includes parcel D. It's probably not necessary because I, I think that exists on record. But in particular, parcel C is where we've got the new right of way being created a little further up. Um, and both, again, both Mr. Diaz and Mr. Gabriel use um, that right of way to get to their properties. Their, their agreement includes maintaining the roadway at some point, possibly adding asphalt, but they recognize a number of things need to be done before they, they get to that stage with the town. But for now, there's an agreement to maintain it, to plow it, um, you know, to fill potholes um, and the like. And um, so that's where we're at. This is the resolution of a, uh, you know, long process. The parties entered an old agreement and worked hard to, to get this done. The plan has been revised a number of times. It's, it's tricky out there, I'm told by the surveyors to find uh, boundary markers, but um, we think we've accomplished what, uh, what everyone wanted to accomplish. And we hope that uh, you see it the same way. Thank you. Can I ask okay. a question on this? Certainly. Um, is there any reason for us to um, opine at all in parcel D? If you say that already exists, there's what what I'm worried about is it looks like parcel D, and maybe I'm missing it, is cutting over into the the next door property. Yes, and that's what's on the ground right now. And you'll you'll almost see a faint line, the actual right of way. Yeah. Directed, that also drifts even further over into that property. So we didn't want to take the liberty of drafting the right of way going further over we we're just using what's on the what exists actual site conditions that's what's there and what's been there for decades and um, right but if if that right of way already exists then the right of way is what it is and we don't want to endorse anything else right well you're not endorsing the right of way you're, do, you're endorsing the a and r plan that says that the property 168B, um, and once we add those two parcels to it, making it larger, that A and R, um, it's an A and R plan. It has frontage on a way that's passable for emergency vehicles, fire trucks, and the like. And I've, I've indicated that in the memorandum. So you're not given an opinion, I don't think, with respect to either parcel C or parcel D on whether uh, we have created valid easements or if, if there's a right of way already for parcel D. Uh, we're asking you to consider what the actual conditions are there, the site conditions, the actual roadway that's used by both of these parties who would otherwise be landlocked without this, and to say that, yes, this is sufficient to satisfy uh, A and R approval. Ed, can I say something, please? Sure. Because D, I, I'm agreeing with you to this point. Excuse me, but, sir. Would you please yeah. identify yourself yeah, and sorry. your address, please? I'm sorry. Craig Dye is 168 Stock Ridge Road. Um, D, isn't that, isn't that the piece of property that the town owns now on that parcel? And I don't believe there's ever been a right-of-way on that piece of property. There is a right-of-way um, recorded. It's in... The, the okay. I have, I, I, I'm not aware of it. I'm pretty yeah. up to date, but I believe that. If, if I'm right, that is where the town owns that little 10,000 square feet parcel. Is that correct? So the actual parcel, that may be correct. I, I don't know offhand. So the parcel where the easement drifts onto that lot next door, is, I don't know if anyone on the board knows, is that town owned property? Well, I guess my point is that uh, I'm not sure if we don't have the, you know, sort of the 
parcel owners represented here, can we really endorse this? You, you're not, you're endorsing only as to the house lot, the 168B. You're saying that A and R approvals. Uh, well, we have to endorse, it has to have access, right? So, and you're saying parcel C is part of this A and R? But yeah, and parcel C is owned by Mr. Diaz. Yes. Yeah. So he's creating, we've created the easement on right. He's only creating it up to the lot line. And then right. you're saying, saying the existing right of way already exists. Right. But that the exists. actual access road is not on the right of way. It overlaps it. Yes, into we're, we're somebody actually, else's property, right? Um, no, it actually comes back. Um, it doesn't go as far onto the property as um, the actual right of way would if we were to follow the right away, it would go more onto that parcel as you head up on the plan. Um, we're not, no one's, you know, this, uh, this has been used for decades, this right away. This, this is, we didn't, we stuck with what actually exists on the ground, the actual area that vehicles drive over. Um, so we're not trying to create any new areas. We're saying that these exist, this is what's been there. I think goes pre-zoning well before the 50s, um, especially for Mr. Diaz's property. And then the house at 168B was added, I think sometime in 1957 or 58. Mm -hmm. So it's been, a, you know, well over 50 years um, that these two houses have been going back and forth on this roadway. And we're suggesting that um, a and R approval is appropriate here because we're not creating a subdivision under the statute and we have frontage in a way. And I think the, the board respectfully, the board's determination here is, is this way sufficient for, in the case I cited in my memorandum, is it sufficient for emergency vehicles to pass back and forth, fire trucks, police trucks, emergency vehicles and the like. Then we contend it is, and if you've gone down there, um, I, I think you would see that it, it is also, uh, it is passable. Aaron, Steve, um, the existing 40 foot wide right of way is on a plan from 1927. So yes. that, that existed prior to zoning. Okay. There was a, both, uh, there's an assessor's card for the 168B Stockbridge that lists that a house was there in 1920. Mr. Diaz's land too, it, the assessor's card says a house existed in 1920. So I can only assume that somehow when the 168B Stockbridge lot was created, we're about somehow in plus or minus 1957. I don't know how it was created, but I can only assume probably an 81L, but we don't have any records of that. And so what they're trying to do is they're trying to add a little bit more land so that the shed will fall on the 168B property, the access will fall on the property and um, make, make the access, make a definitive easement um, for parcel C to have access that the driveway must have existed in the 20s. I don't know how, if you'd had two homes there in the 20s, how you would get there if this driveway wasn't there. I'm, I'm not, believe me, I'm not questioning whether the driveway was there or not. It just, it just, just looks very odd that if we said there's a deed that provides this access and parcel D, and that deed is is supposed to be the existing 40 foot right of way, that the actual driveway is not within the right of way. The actual driveway is less than the 40 feet. It fits within, it doesn't cover it entirely. And it, it, what, what uh, it, it drifts outside of it, it looks like, according okay. to your drawing. Yeah, on one side a little bit, um, but it's not, it's not right. the, the 40 foot right of way, which we haven't been able to definitively identify. Um, 
Oh, okay. I thought you said this this existed on a deed somewhere. It's on a plan. It's referenced in the deed. If you have my memorandum, I believe it's the very first, <clears throat> one of the first documents. Uh -huh. um, if you want to, we can look at that. So, so now this right away matches what is actually out there. No, it doesn't. We've given you actually matches what's out there. We did actual site conditions because, again, in my experience um, doing these things, it's it's better to use what's the actual site conditions on the ground than trying to project what should have been back in 27 or 1957. Exhibit A to my memorandum shows the way. It's actually a pretty straight shot um, that was recorded. Uh, at I guess, Rebecca, what I was saying is that if this 40 foot right of way is shown correctly on this drawing, then the actual road drifts outside of the right of way into somebody else's property. Yes, but we're not relying exclusively on the right of way. Parties have been using this area for to drive back and forth for well over half a century. And as a result, they've created an easement uh, you can call it any number of easements, easement by prescription, easement by necessity, easement by right. None of the property owners, anyone in that area have ever contested their use of the driveway as it, as it exists. And that would be our problem to fight if at some point someone came out and said, look, you're on my property. I, I think, you know, uh, we have adverse possession issues here, but primarily we, we've created an easement by using it for decades and decades. So even if it doesn't mirror what the actual um, right of way is, because that would have resulted in us having to go and stake that out and then dig up possibly whoever owns that land and say to them, you know, now we're coming further over into your property and we're going to use that. And, uh, um, and, you know, that just opens up a whole can of worms. It's it frankly, I, I believe is unnecessary because the parties that live out on Stockbridge Road and the folks that live back at 168B and 168A, these are the conditions they've lived with for more than 50 years. And I don't think the land court or any court in this Commonwealth is going to say that that easement doesn't exist um, by use and by, uh, by prescription or by necessity. Uh, yeah, I guess I don't, I don't know that one way or the other, I guess. Um, if but we're I, trying to just ascertain that there's adequate access then from a from a just a, a, a sort of a lot perspective it would see it would seem like there would be if parcel c was wide enough that it encompassed enough of the existing right-of-way to provide access parcel d because it looks like it looks like it runs the the access line, the right of way line runs straight across, right? Yeah. If you look at my first exhibit A on on the application, my memorandum, there's a plan that shows the actual right of way. I, I'm just looking at your drawing. Yeah. You, you know, your, your let, so that may that may help. But um, again, if we started to create the right of way from when it existed decades ago then we go down a whole slippery slope right. there. You don't want to do that. I, I think, again, in my experience, um, that an easement's been created over the parcel fee as we've shown it because it's something that people have used for many, many years. And um, so we're, we're presenting to the board that this is an A and R, for the lot, it's an A and R plan. And I think you only have to make the determination that there's sufficient uh, access by emergency vehicles. Now, whether at some point parcel D's shown to not be a valid easement or right away, um, then that's my client's problem and as well as uh, Diaz. All right, it seems to me that what we have done here, um, parcel D has existed since before recorded zoning, correct? Yes. Okay. And so what has happened here as a result of, you can call it litigation, we can call it whatever you want, you have with um, Mr. Diaz and with the Gabriels created, or should I use the word legitimize the, basically the driveway to their house. Yeah, memorial. Um, yeah, yeah. Yes. And so what, you've, what we see here is um, an easement 
that has been given by Mr. Diaz to enable Gabriel to, his, his property now includes the fence, now includes the sheds. Um, we've talked to town council about this. This is it's something nice. she, I think that under the circumstances <laughs> with what we have here, this is, we need to approve it. I really think we do. And um, whatever happens down the road, happens down the road, but it's, we are getting more and more complicated form A's than I care to think about. But I think that simply Mr. Diaz with the Gabriels has legitimized that roadway that goes from the end of parcel D to their lot. Am I correct? I, I that's, yeah, that's the way I, I, I see it. And, um, well, yeah, that's the no, way I see it too. Years. I've not seen an A in our plan like this in the 40 years I, I've been doing yeah. it. Right. And I hope we don't see another one like it either. Thank you very much. <laughs> it would have been, been easier if, if it was an 81L, if, if there wasn't that, if Gabriel's lot wasn't his own lot, and I've done plenty of these, it would have been much easier to come in and say, we're going to divide you know, the properties into two lots because then you don't have to comply with all the zoning and the setbacks and everything else, I think. But, you know, that lot was created a long time ago, 168. Yeah. And partial D, partial D was owned by the estate and the aunt from years ago, because it's been in the family since 1927, if I'm correct, was owned by the family and the aunt didn't pay the back taxes. So it was taken by the town some um, maybe six or seven or eight years ago. Something like that, but that has no bearing on what we're doing uh, here. No, it? I'm just, I'm just. That's the history. I'm just trying to. Okay, well, that's fine. All right, um, Patty. So what we try to do is we try to right a wrong that's been there for 50 years. So we just try to legitimize it or memorialize uh, uh, an understanding. Not us. Yeah. All we're trying to do is determine whether there's adequate access, right? Yeah. Right. And we're and not I would trying say to like, legitimize like, anything, right? That's not our role. But is that? But it, I, 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 okay. I withdraw that statement. I, I get what you're saying, Steve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, that's. You I, know, yeah, I, I would perfect. say that it looks like to me that the access they have, um, according to the, to the right of ways and everything, looks like uh, you know to be about six feet wide. No, it's uh, no. It's not. It's not about six feet wide. It's twenty point six feet wide. Well, that's that's what the road has covered. But what I'm saying is that their access is the access under the right of way, and the right of way is shown on this drawing. Well, sir, I have to. I respectfully disagree with that because. Okay. Well, I'm 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 willing to listen. So. Okay. No, thank you. Um. It's not the right of way that we're relying on. We're relying on what has happened for the last 60, 70 years, which is where people have been driving over, which is why it's gotten so, so worn down at times that it's <coughs> had to be filled. So that's what we're telling you. Let, let me, what if, if we didn't have that recorded right of way that's on a plan, then I think this would be a lot easier because we could just say to you, look, this is what people have been using for more than 50 years. And so that under the law gives us easement rights, whether it's by prescription, by necessity, by adverse possession, if you will, um, because this is what the party has been using. I think what's complicating this a little bit is there is this recorded right of way that's been there, uh, but not used. An argument can be made the other way that that right of way to the extent it doesn't fit into what we're showing that's being used has been abandoned because this hasn't been used for decades. And I've tried several cases in the land court arguing that people have abandoned rights of way or easements where they fail to use them for a period in excess of 20 years. So to the extent that this right of way falls outside of what we're showing as parcel D, uh, an argument I, I would think uh, if we go to that property owner next door and say, we're gonna start to clear that, we're, we're gonna use the right of way if they get an attorney, they can say, well, you've, you abandoned that. No one's used it since the 1940s, 1930s. Um, so 
that's the dilemma we have. And that's why we stuck with what exists in the ground. Cause I think I could defend that a lot easier if anyone were, you know, that lived up by Stockbridge Road had an issue with that. You could say, well, we've been using this for decades and decades and decades and no one's objected to it. But the easement outside of that parcel D, I don't think we can defend that. No one's been driving on that, that to the extent that it overlaps outside of parcel D. Um, well, they've been driving on it every year, right? Because they're driving on part of it. There's nobody's, there's nothing that says that you have to use the entire width of the right of way all the time, right? So. Oh, no, absolutely. You, yeah. you can define, you can redefine your right of way or your easement area to the extent that you abandon a portion of it. People drive on it, but it's a dirt road. That's all it is. Well, they no, drive on the I get it. I'm just. Uh, people people uh, have been right, driving let's, on let's that. Get, let's get back to the item that we need to deal with right now. And it has to do with parcel C. We know that D exists. We know that it is a recorded right of way. Is that not true, sir? That D no, that's not true. It's not a recorded right of way. It's. Part of it's recorded, but Part of it is whether recorded, it exists, it, whether it exists. It is today or not, whether it's been abandoned or because it whatever. Oh. But it, this, this right of way, parcel D, exists on the ground today, the ground. and it's been yes. used for decades. Right, not and a now, right of way. It's just right. a road. Whatever. But what we're dealing with here is parcel C, yeah. and parcel C <clears throat> has been used by the Gabriels for. Decades. Is that yeah. not true? Well, when the house was built, going back to 57, and then the game. Right. Okay. But it's been used for decades. Right. Yeah. So in order to make, to legitimize parcel C as an easement access to this property, Mr. Diaz is giving, transferring land to the Gabriels and agreeing to this easement. Is that correct, sir? Absolutely. Yes. Given possible okay. to be to right. All right. So I don't see what the issue is. Karen, uh, here, I'll help me out you. here. We're only we're voting on the, issue. On the we're A. We're voting on a form A. That's what That's we're voting it. on. Yes. Form A. Not the easements. We're not voting. No, on. we're not voting on the easements. Can I can I share my screen here? How do I do that? Steve, you're a co-host, so you can just go and share it. Go down to the bottom and hit share screen. Share screen. I don't see a share screen. I'm going to hold on a second. Maybe I'll, oh, here you might just have to roll over it yeah, and it'll it. pop up. What's the feedback that we're getting? Does that, that show up? It's it's coming, it's it's coming. Did you open the file before you tried to share it? Yeah. Yep. Um, we there we go. go. Um, Mr. It? Diaz, I'm just going to mute you, or if you could mute yourself, just because we're getting some feedback from you, that'd be wonderful. Sure. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. So just hear me out, and you know maybe this goes both ways, but. What you're trying to do is um, provide these three parcels, right? You're saying this parcel already exists, but you're trying to provide parcel A, parcel B, and parcel C, which is fine under an A and R. Then we have to just determine that that pro that has adequate access, right? And according to what you had said, that the access is via the right-of-way. And I've highlighted what looks to me like the right-of-way. That's what it shows in your drawing. And so, so the real access is <clears throat> via this right-of-way and then would be via this small section right here. Well, and I... <laughs> Most he's saying, Steve, goes, he's saying that there is an easement now. Forget the right of way. There is now an easement that has come over years and no, years. No, that's not what, using what I mean, he's, that's what you say. You, you're saying two things then. You're saying there's a right of way that's, that's recognized. There was one originally given, 
That's how the yeah. whole thing started now, but we're off of it a bit. So he's correcting it. So if this property is ever sold, they actually know this is the right of way, not the original one. That's well, right. Because it's, 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 we can't sell it's, just, it's not, what? They don't own that property. Ooh. No, if, 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 um, six, um, 168B went to sell. Now, whoever's buying it knows exactly what the right of way is into their house. Right. Neither, that's, neither the, five, that's why he's doing it. So no it's not said, incorrect. It was just, it happens over time. Nobody owns parcel D. It's just the right to pass over it. And what we're saying is, as we've shown it, that's what they've been passing over for decades. As you've highlighted, that's the right of way on record. Um, and the deed, I don't know if I can defend that though, if anyone were to challenge it, because all of that has not been used unless it, to the extent it's outside of what we show, right? On our parcel D, the rest of that has not been used, hasn't been used. So there's an argument that it's been abandoned. So if I'm a title, I am a title attorney, I look at that and I'm going to say, well, no one's using that. So um, how can you all of a sudden create a right of way going through it? Whereas parcel D, as we've shown, it's been used for decades and decades. And, you know, again, what befuddles me here is the banks have given financing and refinance these house lots, these, these houses. So other, you know, other attorneys apparently looked at it and thought that the, uh, the access was sufficient, but, um, you know, it's certainly that this, we've got to create something, um, you know, showing the existing conditions on the ground and what's being used here. And, most of it, as you point out, sir, um, does fall within the, the actual right-of-way that's on record. Just that little piece comes outside, but that's what's been used. And I feel more comfortable relying on the use for decades than on what's on the record, but not been used for decades. All right, so we're just trying to legitimize parcel C. And I'm not... I'm not yeah, okay, not. I'm not trying to legitimize anything. I'm only set looking at what they pre presented and say, is this an A&R? Does it have adequate existing access, right? And so what you're telling me is that it has adequate access because it's sort of taken as of, you know, kind of as of right of use, it's taken property that wasn't really in the right of way. Um, and you're, you're saying I should be able to rely on that. And yeah, so you know, if that's the case, you know, and, and Karen, if you talk with town council and that's the case, then fine. Um, it, it we're asking you well, to weigh in on 168B Stockbridge. We're adding to that parcel. We're giving, adding parcel A and B, but that's the A and R that, you know, 168B Stockbridge Road, that's the A and R plan would be finally showing me possible. Yeah, yeah, but parcel A, B, and C don't work without access through this uh, right of way, right? In other words, there, there, is, no, there is no access then, right? Exactly, it would have been nice for us to be to leave parcel D out and say this is, Mr. Diaz owns all this land and this is- Yeah, yeah, that would have been easy, right? I, I, get, I get that. Get <laughs> uh, there's only two ways to get to Stockbridge. The, the, right away that would make us have to go back and create it now and go over other people's land. And, you know, again, have them argue you've abandoned it. No one's used it for half a century or use what's on the ground. And I, I just said that my legal opinion is that's a stronger, much stronger case because who can show up now decades later and say, you, you can't use that anymore. Well, we're running around in circles here. Karen, you spoke with town council. I spoke with town council extensively on this and um, you know, she, she sees nothing wrong with parcel A and parcel B being joined to 168B. That's, that's perfectly what allowable for an A and R. Um, you know, she was given all the material, um, you know, for parcel C and parcel C is really just trying to create an easement. So there is access to, legitimate access to 168B, which like I said, the assessor's card indicates a home existed in 1920. And so one assumes that a driveway, this driveway existed in 1920. 
Um, otherwise, I don't know how they would have got to the house. Um, Mr. Valenzuela sent pictures, which I sent the board, and the, the pictures show a gravel driveway that is level and it's got width, so it would appear to have adequate width grading construction for the proposed use of the existing houses. There's also utilities out there that have been there for decades. Um, Steve, we didn't, I did not talk to town council specifically about your point that parcel D isn't totally in the right of way. Um, it seems like they're trying to write something that has been being used for decades. And it seems to me like a very legitimate thing to do. Okay. As long All as, right. as long as you as long as town council is okay with that interpretation. Town Council is okay. That's why I was saying, why, why do we need to opine about parcel D at all, right? Well, well that's the point. We don't. Okay, well, well if we don't, then there's, then there's no, well, sir. Then, then the access is via the right of way as defined on this, on this point. drawing, right? Yeah, right. Well, I can tell you Town Council reviewed my draft motion mm -hmm. and she, she concurred with my motion. All right, I, I, I I bow to superior knowledge on this. It just doesn't make any sense to me, but. Well, um, some things are often don't. I um, think this is this a difficult circumstance. I, I think right. a very difficult I, I, I get that, I get that, right? Um, and, you know, you could probably have, have dealt with it by making the width of parcel C, at, you know, encompass enough of the right of way to consider it, you know, adequate access. All right, enough. Um, does any other board member have a comment, please, before I read the motion? Okay. I move to endorse as approval not required, a plan of land at 168B Stockbridge Road, Situate Mass, stamped by Michael A. Coleman, PLS, of A Plus Construction Services Corporation, for applicant slash owner Stephen A. and Mary Ann Gabriel, as the division of the tract of land shown on the company plan is not a subdivision because every lot shown on the plan has frontage of at least the distance presently required under the situate zoning bylaw on the private right of way off Stockbridge Road, parcel D, which existed prior to the effective date of subdivision control law, August 3rd, 1947, and the existing gravel driveway leading from parcel D to the lot which has existed on the ground since prior to 1947 and is being formalized into easement parcel C and has adequate width grade and construction to provide for the needs of vehicular traffic in relation to the proposed use of the land served by, thereby and for installation of municipal services to serve such land and buildings currently existing and that the division of the tract of land shows a proposed conveyance or change in lot line, which does not alter the existing frontage as required under the situate zoning bylaw. Planning board endorsement of this plan is not a determination of as to the conformance with zoning regulations. Is there a second? Second. Further discussion? All those in favor? Ms. Burbine. Aye. Ms. Lampert. Aye. Mr. Pritchard. Aye. Mr. Bornstein. Aye. Ms. Lewis. Aye. Thank you, unanimous. All in favor. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Okay. Now we have another form A. Thank you very much. For 626 Chief Justice Cushing Highway. Okay, and it looks like Attorney Jeffrey DeLeese is with us this evening. Okay. Um, I'm not sure who's presenting. Who is presenting this? This is Paul Mirabito. Hey, Paul. Hey, Ann. Hello, everybody. Um, Where is Paul? Where are you, Paul? I'm right here. I can see everyone. 
Can you hear me? We can hear you, but we can't see you. You're hiding. Well, Are you listed as Greg Tanzi? Yes, that's me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do you mind turning your camera on? You don't have your video on, if you can figure that out. Yep. If not, it's no big deal, just so we know that you're, there you are. There you are. You can unmute yourself, Paul. Okay. Thank Mr. You. Delisi and Mr. Marabito are both on and unmuted. Sure? All right, Mr. Marabito, what are we up to here? Okay, I'd like to put the plan up. Oh, can I share the screen with I'm you? I'm sorry. We, we're, we, do you want me to make Paul a co-host? Yes, so we can share a screen. Yes, that would yep. be fantastic. Paul, just one second there. One second, Paul. Paul, you are now a co-host. Go ahead and try to share your screen if you so wish. Try that. Yep. You got it. Um, yep. Seth, if you want to make me a co-host, I'll show I'm, you. Yep, yeah, you got it, Delisi. You got it. Mr. Attorney Delisi, you are a co-host. Okay, you, you see can, the plan? There it is. All right. This is a plan of, this is in our plan for, um, a, a parcel one and three lots, lots one, two, and three. Each have their frontage on Chief Justice Cushing Highway, which is a state layout. Um, the wetlands on the, shown on the plan were confirmed by the Conservation Commission at their April 6 meeting, is shown in note four in the plan. Um, based on that, we uh, calculated the upland and wetland area for each of the for each lot, or lot one, two, and three, as well as parcel one. Um, parcel one is not a billable lot. There's a, and the main reason being because of the 100 foot front yard set back along 3A, and the fact that the Conservation Commission doesn't allow work within 50 feet of a wetland. So we set parcel one aside from the uh, from lots one, two, and three. Lots one, two, and three have frontage on Chief Justice Cushing Highway. There's an existing house and barn. The house is shown on this plan as being on lot two and the barn on lot three. The, there's a driveway that comes in from Chief Justice Cushing Highway at the present time that services both the house and the barn. That's, a, that's approximately along the property line of lot one and two on this plan. Where, where is it? Did you, why isn't it shown on the plan? Well, we, we didn't show it. The location of the driveways isn't required to be shown on an on a, um, a and r plan for your regulations. There's, there's also a section of guardrail that starts about in this location and it runs all the way up along the remaining portion of the property. Paul, Paul. You yes. think that you're showing your screen, but it's actually sharing my screen. <laughs> so, so when you're when you're when you're explaining where things begin and end, unless you want to try and share your screen again, you you it it makes sense for you to describe it a little more linguistically so we can all understand. Oh, I thought they could see the drawing. Would you like, they could see the drawing, but they see it on my screen. So if you're moving your pointer, they can't see that. Oh. Would you like me to stop sharing and would you like to try and share again? Okay, why don't you do that? Okay. So Paul, once again, you're gonna go down to that bottom middle of your corner. Do you see, I mean, in the middle of your screen, the, the, the share screen, you see that, right? Yep. The green button, I want you to push that and you'll probably see it does like uh, it could be your desktop. It could be, you could have the plan ready. Yes. So share, so share screen. And when you push that, a that's, new window will come up. It's not coming come up on the screen. Yeah. I don't know if it did before. Well, well, well. Well. 
technology is so much fun. New reality. Shared screen isn't coming up. That's okay. Um, so, 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 Paul, what you're going to do is you're you're just going to have to look at Mr. You're going to have to forget about what you're looking at. You're going to have to look at the screen because Mr. Delisi is sharing his screen. Okay. So you so look Paul, at the screen. Let, let, let's go through this Socratically. Paul, um, you're showing three lots, right? So lot one at the, what, southeast corner of, uh, is it southeast? <laughs> yeah, on, this, yeah. on the southeast corner of lot one. Right. Is the guardrail in existence in that location? The guardrail starts, um, there's a section of guardrail there. But on that plan, there's a MHB that you see, a mass highway bound. The uh, driveways in that area, the, the existing driveway is in the location of the lot line on this plan that separates lot one from lot two. Okay, so, so the, guardrail actually start, the guardrail actually starts uh, on the Habitat for Humanity property at 616 and is, is broken for that driveway, and yeah. then, then continues on into lot one and is broken again for the driveway to the existing dwelling, which is in the location approximately be, of the area of the boundary between lots one and two. That's and correct. then after that break, it begins again all the way through the rest of the property. Am I That's right? Correct. Okay. So you don't show the existing driveway, but it's in the location of this uh, MHB is bound over here approximately. Yes. And what your proposal is, which you're not showing also, is to um, in the future, because lot seven, uh, note seven indicates that they're not to be buildable lots until a common driveway permit issues, if it ever does. Uh, and your proposal is to keep it in the same location of the existing driveway so that you don't need to ask Mass DOT for another break. Am I right? Yes, that's correct. Okay. So that's, that's the concept of what we have here. We have technical frontage on Chief Justice Cushing Highway. Um, the um, frontage uh, does not presently provide access to all three lots as a result of a man-made structure, which is the Mass DOT guardrail, except in the location uh, approximately over here uh, uh, between lots one and two. And that's the location where Paul proposes to have a common driveway or will propose to do that in the future. And so um, I recognize that, that there's this issue of access um, versus frontage. You obviously have frontage. It's a question of adequate or actual access. Um, I, I, I took a look at the um, Mass a &R handbook. There's a case um, called Cochran v. Planning Board of Sudbury, Mass SJC, that basically um, in that particular circumstance, there were wetlands between the public road and the build buildable portion of the lot. And the applicant uh, proposed, um, while they had technical frontage, the applicant proposed to have um, a common driveway proposed. Um, in that instance, the, com the proposed common driveway was shown on the plan. Uh, and there was not a note that said something similar to what Paul is saying. But in any event, in that instance, the planning board denied. The, uh, the Court of Appeals upheld the denial and the SJC overturned. And what the SJC said um, per the, uh, the handbook is that in Cochrane, the court decided that a planning board cannot deny an a and endorsement in those instances where other permitting approvals may be necessary before practical access exists from the way to the building site. So, um, so I guess what we're asking is for the board to recognize that we have future regulatory permits that are necessary for practical access we're asking for an endorsement of the plan that would give us the foothold to be able to then go in with a common driveway application. And in any event, 
Paul's calling all of these not buildable lots until uh, in less than until a special permits issue. So I think that summarizes what's going on. And I just became involved today. <laughs> Aaron. All right. Um, I've had a discussion with Mr. Marabito on this plan because the plan, while I agree, it shows technical frontage. Um, it doesn't show practical access. I mean, we know that there's a guardrail out there. We do know there's an opening in the guardrail out there. I've asked why the driveway, or at least the opening in the guardrail, can't be shown on the plan to show that there's practical access. Um, I think we disagree. We, we're using a different case law, Poulos versus Braintree, that says practical access has to exist on the ground in order to have an A and R endorsement. In um, that circumstance, Karen, there was not a common driveway proposed. But you know what? I let me interject here, Mr. Delisi. This is why do we have to do this sort of back end too? Why didn't Mr. Marabito show what he planned to do in terms of a common driveway? He didn't. He didn't show the guardrail. He didn't show the driveway. He didn't show much of anything other than the lots. I, I think the reason why he didn't was because he thought that by putting in note number seven on the plan and eight and nine, that that would suffice. No, it but doesn't suffice. I think suffice. what I'm hearing from the board <laughs> is that the board doesn't believe that that suffices. So I it think that what, what we need to do is go back and show that. And um, I think that I think uh, I'm hearing that from the board. Well, you could, as far as I'm concerned, there were two options here this evening. Um, I don't know how the rest of the board feels, but you do not have what I would consider to to be viable access because it's a state highway and it's a state um, guardrail in front of two of these lots. So we can either withdraw this without prejudice or I have written here not to endorse. It's, it's your call. So I just wanted to just point out to the board that um, in 2007, so our lot is right here, okay? The Habitat for Humanity house is right here. This lot 1C1, the applicant was the town of Situate. There is a guardrail along the entire length of that, except for what is now a break in the drive for, for the driveway, but which then did not exist. The planning board seemed in that situation to be perfectly happy to sign that plan. And the, the issue with MassDOT is that they won't even consider an application for an opening in the guardrail um, or a widening of the guardrail unless the lot actually exists. So it's kind of a chicken in the egg situation. So I, I think that I think that since the board is going to have jurisdiction on a common driveway, because otherwise we wouldn't be able to do anything with these lots, I, I think it's reasonable for the board to consider that that, that regulatory aspect for vital access is subject to that future permit and it's perfectly acceptable to sign this plan. Well, Jeff, I'm going to disagree because I disagree too. I believe I believe that there is potentially, because I, I, I know there's a break in the guardrail, I've seen it, and we have pictures that we can put up to show, but I don't understand why we can't show the break in the guardrail to show the driveway so that the board can see that, yes, there is some type of viable access. I, I, I absolutely agree. That should, so that that should that, definitely be there. I, I think that... I, I can't just rely on Mr. Marabito's description of where it is. I think it needs to be shown on the plan so that the board can see, and then the board might be able to say, ah, 
this this is leading to this and then we can go from there I, I, I agree. And so I'd ask for um, if, if the board would be so inclined to grant us a continuance to allow Mr. Maravito to revise the plan to include that. Um, and, then, and then perhaps we can follow up on this conversation. I don't recommend a continuance to the board. I would recommend a withdrawal and Absolutely. we can put yeah. that. Um, he doesn't have to pay the filing fee again. Um, because I just, I don't want to be beyond the 21 day time yep. period. Of course, I fully understand. So we would then request that the board um, consider a request uh, to withdraw without prejudice, waiving future fees uh, so that Paul can revise the plan and we can have a, a, another discussion with uh, proper information in front of us. Okay. I move to accept the applicant's request to withdraw the form A plan of land in the town of Situate, 626 Chief Justice Cushing Highway, dated April 28th, 2021. Waive the, um, the filing fee. Karen, when can we reschedule this, please? Yeah, we don't know. No, we don't reschedule no, until we have it filed. All right. We don't reschedule. Refile. Yeah, I, and I, I think I heard the words not prejudice. I just want to make sure I, I kind of zoned out for a second. Uh, we'll, we'll add that in. With, I move to accept the applicant's request without pre prejudice without prejudice, to withdraw the Form A plan of land in the town of Situ at 626 Chief Justice Cushing Highway dated April 28, 21, and waive a new application filing fee. Is that acceptable to everybody? Works for me. Vote on it. All right, okay. thank, thank you very much. Wait, wait, no, wait a minute, Anne, you need a second. You need to vote. Second, second. who? Rebecca seconded. Second. Okay. okay. All in favor? Ms. Barbine. Aye. Ms. Lampert. Aye. Mr. Pritchard. Aye. Mr. Bornstein. Aye. Ms. Lewis. Aye. Okay, thank you, unanimous all in favor. Thank you very much. Okay, moving rapidly along. We have um, approved minutes. Let's see. I joke. Uh, I move to approve the meeting, the meeting minutes for April 8, 2021, and April 22, 2021. There's a second. Second. All in favor? Ms. Barbine. Aye. Ms. Lampert. Aye. Mr. Pritchard. Aye. Mr. Bornstein. Aye. Ms. Lewis. Aye. Thank you, unanimous all in favor. Thank you very much. Accounting. I move to approve the requisition of $199.50 to Bradford Merritt for the return of unexpended guarantee funds for Zero Country Way, Zero Rear Country Way for $2,967 to Charles Fagan for unexpected guarantee funds for 60 Country Way, for $5,106.10 to Horsley Witten for peer review services at Seaside Situate, for $129.36 to Gateway Media for the legal ad for 533 Country Way Cedic Road, for $120.96 to the Gateway Media for the legal ad for 141 Driftway Cedic Road. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Ms. Barbine. Aye. Ms. Lambert. Aye. Mr. Pritchard. Aye. Mr. Bornstein. Aye. And Ms. Lewis. Aye. Thank you, unanimous. All in favor? Thank you, people. Okay, now we have um, liaison reports. Nothing's been happening of late. Uh, how about with anybody else? Well, I would like to tell you that I filed an open meeting law violation with the Public Buildings Committee. Um, they heard it two weeks ago. I should hear back from the state any time. There is no way to attend that meeting. And though I know that they are not public hearings, they are still public meetings. Um, I hear almost every day from the neighbors about what's going on at the senior center. Um, I thought that the head of the public building commissioner handed very, um, didn't take it very seriously, uh, didn't really know anything about a Zoom meeting, didn't know that we were supposed to have access to it. 
Um, they did decide that they would grant us uh, access through a phone line. When you listen to those meetings, people are actually calling in on the telephones. They're very difficult to hear. Um, and I came to find out, uh, I know true members of that committee, they don't even have a copy of the planning board decision. I entered this as a private citizen, not as part of the planning board, but they know I am on the planning board. So just to let everybody know that that is out there and they didn't pay any attention to the decision that we wrote. Hi. Thank you, Patty. You're welcome. Any comments? So, uh, um, Patty, does that mean that there, there are conditions that they, they're in violation of? Well, one would assume so. If you actually look at the lighting in particular, um, mm -hmm. that the lighting is, seems to be too bright. There are no dimmers. And so we are, already had that conversation with uh, Mr. Kirby from Vertec, and um, that has not been addressed yet. And in between their noise conditions, it's, it's the noise violations, um, they're worried about uh, light spillage and light pollution um, and people in and around the property at all hours of the day and night. So I'll hear what they have to say back to us. They were pretty dismissive that anybody from the public should have any interest in the, in the project. Hmm. So Kara, do we know anything about the lighting yet? No, nobody's gotten back to me about the testing, um, that, the testing that was done. Okay. So, like I said, I went down, to, we were not invited to the uh, open house. They opened it today. There was a ribbon cutting today. I, I did not get an invitation. I wouldn't imagine I would. I didn't either. I <laughs> didn't think I would. But um, I have to tell you that the refrigeration unit on the roof of the senior center is very, very loud. It vibrates constantly. You can actually feel it from the sidewalk when you're standing there. So I don't know what they're going to do. They put some kind of fencing in front of it so it, like, it bounces off the eaves. I'm not an engineer. I don't quite know how that works, but just listening to everybody, it's, um, as we all know, the neighbors are not happy with this project. I, I'm sorry, when you say the roof of the senior center vibrates? Yeah, if, you look at the, if you're looking um, at the driveway access to the senior center, yeah. When you're at the front door. If you look at the roof, there's a refrigeration coolant unit on the roof of that. Yeah. Um, and it, it's very loud and very noisy. And it's kind of like in this valley, so it like vibrates off the walls, it feels oh, like. Yeah. yeah. Reflects off the walls. Yeah. And they can hear that all the time. And it's kind of noisy, actually. I, I think that that's one of those issues that needs to be addressed at a later date, maybe when they do their punch list stuff. I have forwarded any complaint I got on the sound um, problems with the roof. I have forwarded those complaints to the uh, Steve Kirby and the um, and the t project team, so they are aware of they are aware of some of the complaints and they are trying to address them. Okay. I, I said I, I got the new agenda today. There is still no way to contact this board. They tell you to leave to email the town hall. Like who, where, there's no email address, there's no phone numbers, it's, it's a very insular community. Um, and they seem to be a little uh, surprised that somebody would be interested in what they had to say, which was my takeaway from the phone call. All right, All right. Um, any other liaison reports? No, okay. Um, planning and development, Karen? All right, so we have been very busy. Um, I have engaged a consultant um, to work on a lot shape bylaw for fall town meeting. So we're in the initial stages of it now. And hopefully we'll be having some discussions this summer with the board on, um, on this issue as I know it's all um, a, a dear issue to us. Um, <laughs> And I don't know if anybody noticed the lots on uh, 626 uh, CJC Highway, you know, 480 foot long rat tail, five feet wide. Um, Drew Company, I received their $60,000 um, payment for the uh, traffic uh, pedestrian greenbush fund. Um, they will be starting construction on Monday. Um, 
I, I just want to make sure everybody understands that the trellises that were there in the original first concept design are not there in the um, final design plans. The, um, the parking, it's going to be all concrete so that the Boston Ivy is going to grow along the concrete. But the trellises have been removed. Um, they will be coming in, um, hopefully, <laughs> um, for their surety for the, um, remember, we gave them a surety for off-site roadway improvements because they're going to be redoing old driftway. Um, and they'll be coming in with that, hopefully, on May 27th. But I, I'm going to, I think that that's, uh, they will be starting construction, I believe, on Monday. Um, I went to a pre-con today for 18 Ford. We received our $25,000 for that uh, pedestrian fund as well. Um, they have decided that they really are not going to do a baseline noise. And I said, okay, that's fine. Just please understand um, you're going to be shut down and fined if there's a complaint. Um, <coughs> and they're still working on the final um, gutter sizing issue with John, but things are, I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to sign up on the building permit tomorrow on that. Seaside at Situate is ongoing. Um, they, the test pit results that we did in three basins should be hopefully to us in the next two weeks. And then that will determine for three of the basins what corrective action needs to be taken with those basins. Um, the work in Hatherley Road is hopefully going to be done by Memorial Day. They had to, uh, they had to drop the road about 10 inches to put in some catch basins to catch all the puddle and that big puddle that used to be there. Um, now it's a little bit like a little bit roller coastery out there, this big dip in the road because the tapers really aren't long enough. But they assure us that when they they have to grind the pavement down and redo a whole top coat, that 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 the vertical curve will be smoothed out a little bit more when that um, happens. Um, and the units are just, they're going as well. Um, I also had a pre-con today for um, Zero Rear Country Way. That was the old um, Merritt property, which has been bought by um, Anthony Nader. Um, they don't have their curb cut permit and they don't have their surety. So they are not authorized to start. The only thing I did give them permission to do is to do the test pits um, that have to be done prior to grubbing. They could go in and do that because they said they can gain access from uh, Mr. Merritt's son's property. So um, I think we'll be getting the plans in for endorsement for 4852 um, New Driftway for probably June 10th. And next time we have, um, we have continued scenic road for 533 Country Way. And we have a major site plan administrator review for the Inley School. Um, they're adding a toddler building. And so um, just bear in mind that under the Dover Amendment, we are only, we can only legally um, regulate certain things. So we remain very busy with a lot under construction who are going to be starting construction. Um, and you're going on vacation. And I'm going on vacation next week. So, nice. um, but it's, it's going to be busy. Ben? Um, I was just going to note now on for the next meeting that uh, I think it's appropriate that I recuse myself. So just for the alternate to have a heads up because my daughter is actually a student at the Inley School Toddler House, so um, I don't think it's right that if I'm actually paying tuition there that I serve on the uh, as a member voting on that that particular item. 
Okay, that's that's good to know up front so everybody knows and uh, we'll take that too. Everybody can study up on the project. Okay. We'll send it out um, at the end of next week. We're, we're, um, we just got the second set of plans in. They've responded to most of the comments. So I'm anticipating um, based on their responses that um, the planning board should be able to do this in one night unless there's major opposition, but I mean, nobody's asked to see the plans or anything. It's, it's converting an existing single family home into the toddler facility. Right. And there's only one other house right next door. And I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if eventually the Inley school buys that one too. I mean, they've got quite a compound going there. They do. So that's where we are. And, um, That's where that's we are. That, that's, okay, anything else from anybody? I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Ms. Burbine. Aye. Ms. Lampert. Aye. Mr. Pritchard. Yes. Mr. Bornstein. Aye. Mr. McLean. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Lewis. Sorry. <laughs> no problem. Okay. And Seth, thank you so much. Thank Don't you. forget to vote. Oh, and write